What's up guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I use AirDNA as a short-term rental investor and how you can use it too to get the most accurate numbers possible when analyzing your deals and ultimately just to figure out if deals are worth investing in. Now, I've talked extensively on this channel about why property analysis is so, so critical and how most investors go in pretty well blindfolded when they're investing in short-term rentals and you just don't have to. You can avoid a lot of potential risk and make sure you're getting way bigger upside by just knowing the tips and tricks and strategies I'm going to share in this video that's going to show you how to use data from AirDNA to analyze your investment properties. So let's go ahead and dive over to the computer here and let's go through some of the main features of AirDNA that I love the most when it comes to actually analyzing properties for short-term rental as an investor. So the first thing I love is you're just gonna basically go into the into the market and the first place you'll end up is this overview tab here that gives you kind of a rundown of some of the averages. It's not super, super helpful, but the one thing I do love is the number of active rentals that just tells you how many properties there are in that market, which if you're going into a big city can give you an indication of how much competition there's gonna be. If you're in other areas, it can tell you that there's just not gonna be a lot of data if there's only maybe 10 or 20 listings. And so it's just a good kind of baseline. Um, I don't personally pay too much attention to this market grade because a lot of things don't really matter. Um, in my experience, it comes down a lot more to the deal itself than to the market that you're in. Another thing I don't love about this market score is that it factors in regulations, which are just inaccurate on AirDNA. Um, it's kind of the, the easiest way to put it. But overall, some good stuff here. You can see a bunch of different things like rental growth. That's obviously good to see. Uh, we want to see uh, amenities, things like that. What percentage of properties are available full time? Uh, uh, what percentage are booked? Um, do rental settings. So there's all kinds of cool things that you can look at. Um, so that's pretty helpful, but really just kind of a baseline for starting out. Once I'm actually getting into the details, I want to do uh, this next thing I'm going to do is basically look at the differences in different sizes of properties. So I'm going to then compare that to the prices, the average sale price for those size properties in the market to see where I can get the biggest delta essentially. So what I'll do here is I'll basically just come in and I'll do an export for each different property size. So let's say, for example, I'm looking at two bedroom. Let's just look at two, three, and four bedroom properties for the sake of this. So I'm going to go ahead and look at all two bedroom properties. I'm just going to remove all filters aside from that. So that I'm just looking at all the two bedroom properties in this market. So you can see that there's 129 in the market that I'm looking at here, and I can download the, uh, the data for that and then go on to three bedroom properties apply that and we're gonna see there's 299. I can then download that data. And then lastly, I can download the four bedroom data, apply that, you can see there's 184 listings and download that. Now what I'm gonna do with all these downloads is I'm gonna compare and I'm gonna compare relative to the purchase price for that size property in this market to again, just see where I'm gonna get the biggest delta. So I've set up a little macro, you can do that too pretty easily or you can just sum up the numbers manually. This just shortens the process for me a little bit. Um, so I've got, let me see here, Oh, I kind of missed track, lost track. So yeah, 40, that's gonna be two bedroom, three bedroom, uh, and then four bedroom. So I'm just gonna run the macro on all of these so that we can see exactly what I'll do uh, as a kind of starting point when I'm analyzing properties. Uh, is I wanna know where I should spend the majority of my time looking at properties. If two bedroom properties, I know that the numbers aren't nearly as good on them for the purchase price, then I'm probably just not gonna spend much time looking at two bedroom properties. So you can see here that a really good example here, this is four bedroom properties, and let's just go with the last year's number in 75th percentile just for the sake of this example. Um, that means four bedroom properties are generating $110,000, for $80,000 a year is what a three bedroom property is gonna generate on average. And then $54,000 a year is what you'll generate on average for a uh, for a two bedroom property. Now let's just for the sake of it, I wanna see if we see a, a kind of big jump going to five bedroom properties. And let's download this one as well and take a look at what we see. So if we run the same numbers here, you can see now we jump up to 170. So that's really what I was looking for is that jump, that gap. So what you'd imagine is like, if you look at these numbers, you've got, um, you've got 
a pretty well $30,000 jump each uh, each time you go up by one more bedroom. So you can see here $54,000 for a two bedroom and then about $30,000 more for a three bedroom. Uh, and then again, about $30,000 more for a four bedroom. And then when you jump up to a five bedroom, you can see that it jumps up by much more than 30,000. We're about $60,000 increase there. So you can see there's quite the big jump. And what I would imagine is that if we looked in this market and compared the average purchase price of a two bedroom, three bedroom, four bedroom, five bedroom, that going up from a four bedroom to a five bedroom, we probably wouldn't see a huge dramatic increase by just adding that one extra bedroom. But we do see, uh, and, and when I say dramatic increase, I mean the purchase price probably wouldn't be dramatically different, but the amount of revenue you can get from just that one extra bedroom is quite substantial. So in this market, I would prioritize looking at five bedroom properties and larger to make sure that I'm making as much as good of a return as possible because that's typically where the ROI is gonna be. Again, I'm not actually looking right now at the average sale price, but that is what I'd be comparing to to figure out where I can get the biggest delta. Now that doesn't mean I'm not gonna be able to find two bedroom, three bedroom, or four bedroom properties that will get a good return on investment, but it does mean that it'll be easier, generally speaking, to find five bedroom properties that will get a better ROI if there's a bigger delta on average. It just means that the average deal is gonna have a better ROI when I'm looking at five bedroom properties. So prioritizing looking at those properties is gonna just make sure I'm finding more great deals. So that's how I like to use it to start out. But then once you actually have a five bedroom property, the next question is how do I analyze that specific property and make sure I'm buying a property that makes sense? Well, I'd essentially do the same thing where I would pull up, let's just close some of these tabs out. Um, and so let's say here now I'm looking at five bedroom property, well, I'd want to look at the numbers on, on it on average and I'd see, okay, if I'm analyzing for a kind of reasonable scenario, I might assume that it's going to be somewhere around 140 to 160. I like to be relatively conservative. You can see that every single year over the last five years, it's trended upwards, which is great to see. Um, but then you can see that um, obviously there's, it could pull back and so we want to be a little conservative. So let's say I'm estimating maybe 140 to 160 thousand dollars in a reasonable scenario. In a best case scenario, it could do 170 or 180 if it keeps trending upwards. And in a worst case scenario, it could go back to about 85 or 90 thousand um, dollars. And so we really want to analyze and look at these numbers so that we can figure out what our cash on cash return is going to be in any of these different scenarios and make sure it makes sense. So that's how I love using AirDNA for running a specific property, but that is still just looking at the averages. So then the question from there is what, like how close is the property I'm looking at to the average five bedroom in this market? And that's why I really, again, love AirDNA is that you can actually open the map up, look at the area, filter for just five bedroom and larger properties like I've done here, and then look at specific properties to see how they compare to your property. So for example, this one here is generating $274,000 a year. That might skew the numbers up, but again, we have 137 active listings in that data set, so it's a large enough sample size, the number shouldn't be skewed too heavily. But you can see, well, hey, if, I, if I'm looking at a property that's actually really similar to this one in terms of just the niceness, the overall aesthetic, then estimating 170 might actually be low because this one's generating $270,000. Whereas if I'm looking at a property that's more similar to, let's say one of the ones down here, that's this one's available for almost the whole year, 10 months out of the year, and it generated $94,000. If I'm looking at something that's similar qualitatively to this one, it's more similar to this one than this other one over here, then I may want to be pulling back my numbers a bit and estimating closer to $100,000, $130,000. Guys, just want to take a quick break here to say that for those of you watching who want to build cash flow and long-term wealth by purchasing Airbnbs and short-term rental properties, there's a link in the description right down below for a free training that'll walk you through my exact strategy for investing successfully in Airbnbs. Now, if you're not ready to actually buy properties and you wanna get started managing other people's properties on Airbnb the same way I got started and build a full-time income managing other people's properties, there's actually another free training linked in the description down below as well that'll be a really great fit for you. So whether you wanna invest in short-term rental properties and actually build amazing cash flow and long-term wealth by acquiring the assets, buying the properties themselves, 
or you're looking to earn a full-time income managing other people's properties on Airbnb, we've got some awesome trainings that are linked in the description down below that'll definitely help you out. When you sign up for the trainings, we're also gonna send you a few other tools and resources completely for free just to help you get started. Again, the links to sign up are in the description down below and both trainings and all the tools are completely free. So make sure to register for the trainings, links in the description down below. Again, it's just a really great way to get both the quantitative and the qualitative to make sure my numbers are as accurate as possible. But as a lot of you guys know, it's not just about the income, it's also about the expenses. And one of the things that I see mis uh, investors making a mistake on more often than not is not backing out expenses like cleaning fees or just not doing it properly. The reality is the that a lot of investors, they look at occupancy as this um, kind of just irrelevant metric that's just kind of we're just going to take our best guess at it when in reality it, it doesn't ultimately matter sure how you get to your income number in terms of occupancy so what i mean by that is that if you get to a hundred thousand dollars in revenue then from an income standpoint it doesn't really matter whether you do that with 50 percent occupancy or 90 percent occupancy at the end of the day you have the same amount of income coming in you're just doing it in more or less days but from a cost and expense side of things it does matter because that higher occupancy rate is going to lead to more turnovers and therefore more expenses to pay out to your cleaner there's probably going to be more activity to pay for your guest communication things like that as well so it's really important to factor that in so that's why i generally will jump over to the occupancy tab and i'll see what i should be expecting for an average occupancy rate so that I can accurately estimate my cleaning fees. That's another thing that I like to do is just call around to cleaning companies in the area, see what the average rate is gonna be, and then factor in how many cleanings I'm gonna have in an average month based on my estimated length of average stay and the average occupancy rate in the area. So I can get all that data from right here on the occupancy tab. Uh, which makes it really, uh, really simple and easy to accurately analyze my expenses. Um, now, the other thing I like to do as well is come into top properties and I like to just kind of look and see. This is just honestly helpful for me as an investor to figure out how I can make my property perform even better. Because the game I love to play is finding properties that are total no brainers because even in a worst case scenario, they're still going to make sense and that it's going to be really easy for them to hit numbers that will generate me a 15% or greater cash on cash return. Once I've found that really great deal, I know that it's going to be pretty easy for me to make a return on my investment. Pretty much no matter what I do, I'm going to get a great return because it's going to be just easy. I just bought the right property at the right price that it's not an uphill battle from here. But then the game that I get to play is how do I make a great investment, an outstanding knock out of the park investment. And I do that by just trying to play the game of making the, the income much, much more significant without spending a whole bunch more money. So what I like to do is then jump in here and see what amenities, what different features are going to really make the property stand out and generate a better ROI overall. So if I see that a lot of the top properties have, for example, hot tubs or have kayaks or have fire pits, then I'll consider adding those things to my property as well to make it stand out even more. It's also just great to be able to see what the top properties are doing in terms of their listing, their performance, their titles, all that stuff, uh, because all that stuff can be helpful in just helping you to perform better and be a better host overall. So that's some of the kind of more, most basic ways that I use AirDNA to analyze properties for investment and make sure I'm making the right decisions. If you have other ways that you like to use it or other tools overall that you like to use, then let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video and you found it helpful and you want more on this topic, then let me know in the comments and give this video a like. Just hit that thumbs up button down below the video. It really helps me out with knowing what kind of content you guys enjoy and get value from and also getting these videos in front of more people. Last but not least, before you leave here, just make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date with the two new videos we post every single week. All that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.